Hey guys, guess what? I'm back. Hello everyone, I'm Blake Childers, I make films. Hello everyone, I'm Blake Childers, I'm not that one filmmaker. And hello everyone, I'm Blake Childers, I'm not one filmmaker. Hello everyone, I'm Blake Childers, and I'm that one filmmaker. Like Childress, and I'm that one filmmaker, and you know, making movies. Sammy, Sammy, where I'm are you going? It's a bit difficult. <laughs> <laughs> this isn't part of the video, I'm just... oh. but I'm back with some more reviews. I don't think I can start making reviews on a more consistent schedule now that I've finished making meta. But to celebrate my return of reviews, I wanted to review something interesting. Something new. Something different. Something I should have reviewed on Halloween. <laughs> I'm sorry. So I wasn't aware of this until like a few weeks ago, but apparently our boy Jason Blum partnered with Amazon Prime and created a horror anthology series? Oh no. Let me play among the stars. He's the pilot. The weird thing is that Welcome to the Blum House is not comprised of TV episodes like Twilight Zone or Black Mirror but it's instead comprised of four feature-length movies that I guess have no connection to each other at all. I mean, I tried looking for references to the other films within the movies, but as far as I can tell, there was no effort to even attempt that. But anyway, for today's video, I will be discussing my thoughts and opinions on Welcome to the Blumhouse, Volume 1. Also keep in mind, I will be discussing the films in the order that I watched them, and then I'll give my personal rankings for the four movies at the end of the video. So without further ado, let's start with The Lie. The Lie is probably the most boring, ugly piece of shit I've seen in a while. And apparently people agree because this film is usually ranked as the worst film in the first volume of this anthology. I really don't even know where to start when it comes to the film's issues. Now to be honest, I think the concept of the film isn't really that bad. Basically, the film is about a divorced couple who has a daughter that accidentally killed her best friend, and the chaos that ensues from trying to maintain the lie that she didn't kill her. On paper, it's a decent concept. However, in practice, the film somehow ruins it. First of all, the actual chaos that ensues from trying to keep the lie going really isn't that interesting or significant. Like, I think there's a few cops and then the dead girl's dad and actually that, that basically sums up the supporting cast. Maybe I just got bored or something, but I swear I don't remember anything all that interesting coming from the cop characters. I guess maybe the other dad going nuts and harassing the main characters was a little interesting, or at least interesting enough to keep me awake. Probably the hugest problem with the film's plot is definitely the ending twist. Spoiler alert for anyone who wants to watch this, but Basically, near the end of the film, the parents end up murdering the dead girl's father in a pretty dark scene, which then leads into the reveal that, shocker, the daughter's friend actually never died, and the daughter only created that lie so that she could go be with her out-of-town boyfriend. And the daughter never told her parents because they seemed to be getting along with each other. And the movie just pulls and it comes at night and abruptly ends with police sirens in the background. I'm not really sure what that means. Did the parents get arrested? Did the other dad's body get found? Did the parents call the cops on their stupid fucking daughter? Who knows? Who cares? Apart from the terrible plot, the writing is pretty bad. Come this weekend. 
I was sure they were doing this together, you know, they're with their secret plan. With a lot of Hollywood teen writing. Hey, what happened to your face? Looks like you got hit. Also, the main character is supposed to be like 15, but she's played by a 21 year old. The acting, especially from Joey King, is just fucking terrible. <laughs> the actual direction of the film is bland and lacks any sort of style. Basically, the movie reminds me of a lower quality version of the worst Blumhouse movies, and you know what's ones I'm talking about. And that's about all I have to say about it. This movie lacks any sort of substance or significance, so I'm giving it a 3 out of 10. Black Box! Black Box is definitely an upgrade quality, but it's still definitely just a lower quality Black Mirror. The film itself is about Nolan, who got in a car wreck where he lost most of his memory. He's then given the chance to undergo VR therapy to face his old memories and regain them. While the film's concept is definitely less interesting thematically than The Lie, the actual execution of the plot is definitely more interesting to watch. I actually cared about the main character and I wanted to see what would happen to him. Black Box does have a similar problem from The Lie, with the conclusion of the film being pretty unsatisfying. I won't spoil it here, but I don't know, it just feels very empty and hollow at the end. The acting in this film is definitely much better. I like Nolan and his doctor friend Gary, I also like the friendly, evil-natured energy from the character Lillian, and I think probably the only bad actor in this movie is Nolan's daughter Ava, who is a child actress, so I really can't blame her. I need breakfast. I'm fine. I wasn't asking. No. The writing was definitely a lot better in this film, but the direction still lacks style throughout the whole movie. Not sure if this is just an aspect of the anthology or if it's just lower quality directing. Apart from the unsatisfying conclusion, I think the film's biggest problem is that it really doesn't stand on its own at all. While the longer Black Mirror episodes like USS Callister were TV episodes, they're good enough to the point where they work as great TV movies. But The Lie and Black Box both feel like Twilight Zone episodes that just go on and on and on for way too long. Like, I could not imagine these movies being released in theaters. And hell, now that I think about it, compared to the originals from Netflix and hell, even Amazon Prime, these two movies just lack that cinematic quality. And for that, I give Black Box a 7 out of 10. Evil Eye Evil Eye is a bit of a step down. While The Lie was flawed due to its execution of its decent plot, Evil Eye as a film is not made poorly at all. In fact, I'd say it's much more visually interesting than The Lie and Black Box. Which isn't really saying much, but it's something. My problem with Evil Eye is it's conceptually just the dumbest shit I have ever seen. I mean, I don't know, a mom's dead abusive boyfriend coming back from the grave and dating her daughter as revenge just sounds stupid. He is Sandy. Sandy puts him. I think if maybe they made it to where her daughter's fiance was actually just some normal guy and it's a story about a mother struggling to let her daughter go because of her own psychological problems and fears, it probably would have fixed the movie's concept and also probably would have given some sort of thematic statement on a mother's trust in her daughter's instincts and the relationship between a mother and a daughter. But no, like the mother calls up the fiance near the end and he just admits, oh yeah, I came back and now I'm gonna get your daughter and we're gonna, we're gonna be one big happy family. I mean, I'll admit, I was interested in what I was watching, but that was mainly just because I wanted to see where it would go. Could they pull off a good movie with a premise as stupid as that? And they didn't. The message of the film is also just really demeaning and weird. I guess the message is follow everything your parents tell you because they're your parents and they're much wiser and know better than you. Or maybe it's just don't fuck your mom's dead ex-boyfriend. Thanks Jeff Bezos. Apart from that, the movie is pretty much fine in every other aspect. The cinematography and lighting are decent. The acting is fine, the writing was absolute dog shit, 
mainly because it falls victim to the adaptation problem, where the screenplay sounds less like actual people talking and more like characters in a book talking. Mm. Are you wearing a bracelet? Yes. Good. It will protect you, darling. If you're not careful, bad things could happen. Which apparently this movie is an adaptation of an Amazon Audible original. So... Eh, I give Evil Eye a 3.5 out of 10. Nocturne. Nocturne is considered the best in Volume 1 by some, which honestly makes sense. The movie definitely has the most creative visuals and direction. Like, the cinematography and lighting actually look like someone put effort into it. Which is refreshing considering the other three movies were somewhat mediocre and bland with their visuals. I'd go as far to say that visually, I think this movie is just as decent as something like Hereditary. Well, okay, I'm exaggerating a bit, but I guess it's like a B-grade Hereditary ripoff. Which, I mean, ain't that bad. However, I gotta be honest. This film's biggest problem is actually quite the opposite of the other three films. While I hated the execution of their plots, most of them had okay concepts. And while Evil Eye was stupid, I still understood the plot, the characters, and who I was supposed to care about. Nocturne's biggest problem is that I have no fucking clue what happens in the movie. I mean, even the plot summary is a bit vague and hollow. I think the movie is about two twins that love to play piano, but one twin is better than the other and receives more love and attention. And, and, and then the unloved twin finds a notebook belonging to a girl who killed herself. And then the, the uh, pages in the book start to correspond with different people in her life, like her sister's boyfriend who she has sex with and her piano teacher who she tries to also have sex with and eventually her because she follows the sacrifice page at the end of the book and then she kills herself at the end and then the movie just abruptly ends i mean i think the problem is that i get what's happening but I'm not being told why, and I don't mean that I need to understand what's happening. What I mean is, why should I care? Why should I care about this girl who isn't as loved as her sister? She's an arrogant asshole throughout the whole movie. What if I could be more? What if I could be great? All I need is a chance to prove myself. There's no interesting transformation arc for her character, and her death isn't horrifying or satisfying or anything. She literally jumps off a building and fucking dies. Same pretty much goes for all the other characters. All of them are irredeemable. Not a single one is even likable. Like even the main character's old piano teacher, who was the nicest guy ever, just fucking slaps her in the face during one of her lessons. Oh man, Nocturne. Great movie from a visual standpoint, with some decent direction but it fails from shit writing, a sheer lack of empathetic characters for me to care about, and a plot that I just don't give a shit about. I give Nocturne a 5 out of 10. So let's rank these four movies. Coming in at number four, we have The Lie. Honestly, I don't even know how you'd fix that movie. Coming in at number three, we have Evil Eye. Evil Eye? More like, uh, evil guy no 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 okay coming in at number two we have nocturne definitely the best film technically but worst with its characters and a incoherent plot and coming in at number one we have black box good job blumps and jace you produce something that's not as bad as the other 500 movies you've made conclusion at the end of the day i think this anthology's biggest problem isn't even the quality of the films. It's the anthology itself. Why would Blumhouse even make something like this? I mean, they could have just made a movie deal with Amazon and released them individually. I mean, if you're going to make an anthology, then create some sort of identifier that viewers can use to connect the films together. Like with The Twilight Zone, the idea was that every episode took place in an area in which the only limits to what was possible was our own imagination. 
and every episode utilized horror and sci-fi elements to teach a lesson about the human condition and other sociological concepts like racial inequality, political corruption, and that's just to name a few. The same thing can be said for Black Mirror. Black Mirror is connected through its commentary on the advancements of technology. Each and every episode details technology and how it relates to people. Hell, the title itself relates to that. What is a Black Mirror? Look at your phone turned off or a TV that is turned off. Boom, it's a Black Mirror. You see a dark reflection of yourself through technology. So the show itself is a dark reflection of humanity being affected by advancements in technology. But with Welcome to the Blumhouse, there is no connection. I mean, I guess I thought I saw the same house set in Evil Eye and Black Box, but I, I really don't know. With no connection to each other, these films are forced to stand on their own, and they just aren't good enough to do that. Instead of feeling like a decent anthology with four distinct visions, we just have four flawed films that I really don't see myself ever watching again. I guess I'd recommend Black Box, but the other three you can just throw in the fucking garbage. Blum, please, for the love of God, make sure Volume 2 is better than this. I mean, you're making eight films. They can't all be bad. Right? Thank you guys so much for watching this new video. Let me know what you guys think in the comments. Have you seen these movies? Do you agree with what I said? Or do you think the first volume of Welcome to the Blumhouse is actually good? Like this video if you liked it, dislike it if you dislike it, and also remember to share this video with your friends and family as a special way of saying thanks. Actually, no. Cut that out. That was stupid. I'm Blake Childress, and I'm that one filmmaker, and I hope you're having a wonderful Thanksgiving. Bye-bye now. so much for watching this video <laughs> and I hope you're having a wonderful Thanksgiving with your family and friends and I hope to see you fuck wave to the camera Blaine I can't even see the camera well just that's the TV <laughs> wait